The following is a presentation of TFNN. It is now time for Trade What You See with your host, Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, Larry Pesavento. Well, folks, they're getting ready to have a funeral over at the Chicago Mercantile Exchange. Uh, they're preparing everything right now. The casket's ready. They're just waiting to put the body in. It looks like it's going to be the end of silver. Uh, we're down here against 1590 one more time per ounce, and it is at the moment of truth. It reminds me from 1949. I was with my grandma, and we were watching the Lone Ranger. I had just finished the fourth chance of getting out of the third grade. I finally made it, and I remember the sound of the fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high hole silver as Clayton Moore and Jay Silverheels made history. And this thing is in big trouble. If it doesn't hold 6, 1590, I'm not sure. Now, we've got a, a different situation in gold. Gold is holding above the number, uh, above the 786 that it made Friday. That doesn't mean it's going to stay there. But uh, it's really, uh, you know, held that 1161 from Friday very nicely. Uh, I think as long as it doesn't get below uh, 1161, we've got a chance uh, from this level. But, uh, boy, it is, uh, it's is—it's nip and tuck over there in the, in the metals pits today, I can tell you that. If we get a total meltdown in stocks, which is uh, possibly uh, uh, a, a possible because of the fact that the internals on the market are so very bearish, I, I haven't seen anything this bearish in a very long time, especially at this level. But, you know, we'll have to wait and see. Remember, I'm wrong a lot. But my assumption is if we take out the lows that we made Friday uh, and we got a really strong trend line in the cash S&P near where we closed, if we break below that, I think we'll break down into the 10th. That's the uh, the date that we're looking at where the mercury uh, will go direct. Uh, we got that from our, our friend uh, Norm Winsky from Astro Trend uh, back when the market was making a high, when mercury was retrograde, and we have a possibility uh, coming in here on the 10th. And, and Norm will be our, our guest there on the 10th, too. So that'll be interesting, uh, you know, to keep an eye on. I've got a whole bunch of charts to go through. I just wanted to get through a few of them, um, you know, to tell you the overall structure of the market. The first one that I posted in shows you the new highs to new lows uh, in the NASDAQ, which is the market that's been holding everything up. And as you can see, that has been rolling over since March, actually. And if we take a look at our uh, new highs to new lows here, you'll see that we have the same, pretty much the same situation uh, going on where we have uh, lower highs uh, in the NASDAQ as the market made new highs. Th this type of divergence, folks, is uh, I, I don't know whether you believe in technical analysis or not, but that's mother God and country stuff. I mean, if you don't believe in that, uh, you know, you shouldn't think of, uh, you know, saying anything uh, uh, about a wish on uh, Christmas Eve because Santa not going to come to your house. I can tell you that right now. Uh, it might we, we could have a good rally here into the 10th because, you know, we're down to some pretty good support. Uh, in the uh, S&P and also the NASDAQ hasn't hardly broken at all. The IWM uh, still looks uh, relatively bullish. Uh, you know, it's got, uh, you know, it's up above the 786 still. Nobody seems to be uh, afraid of it. The, the uh, VIX index still looks interesting. But we do have one little factor that's uh, starting to uh, pop up. And this might be interesting to watch today. And that is our banking index, which has one, been one of the strongest indices of all time. And we have a, uh, what we call a, Plethora. I always like that word. Don't know quite what it means. I think it means a lot. But um, this is that banking index, uh, which, you know, your bank stocks, Goldman Sachs, um, Morgan Stanley, J.P. Morgan. But we're up here with a three drive to a top pattern. Uh, we have the five wave expanding triangle. Uh, we have that 20 min line that we talked about where the market breaks out above that trend line pulls back to it one more time and then takes off. Folks, keep an eye on that pattern. If you ever see it again, bullish or bearish, because it is a monster. Uh, you can't be, uh, you can't uh, shake that off. I mean, you won't see it in any technical books anywhere, but uh, it's it's a monster of a pattern because it acts like a like a pen, uh, a pendulum to send the thing you know up into the uh, up into the sky, which is done. We've now completed the ABCD. We're right up at the 1.27 from the yearly highs. 
Um, three drive to a top pattern. Uh, boy, a lot of patterns in here. So uh, this could be the last nail uh, in the proverbial coffin. Uh, uh, that might be my coffin too, I guess. I don't know. I won't, I won't, I won't use a coffin, folks. I am, uh, they are going to spread my ashes over the, uh, the sands of Tucson. That's when the old time comes, but I uh, hope that won't be for another 25 years or so. We'll have to wait and see. Um, we had an interesting situation this morning, early this morning. I wanted to show you what happened uh, over in uh, Europe. We had the DAX index was making, uh, and boy, folks, if you want to see something uh, interesting, follow the DAX index because it's like uh, the S&P on steroids. It's about 10 times the volatility of the uh, S&P futures it's just uh, it's really amazing it follows the fib numbers very nicely we hit this uh, three drive to a bottom pattern uh, spot on at that 11,100 level and we rallied all the way up uh, 100 and oh, about 115 uh, points and now we've come down and we've broken into new low ground and that's not a good sign either so you have got to pay a little bit of attention to that if you see that uh, coming along if you have any questions it's 877 Nine two seven six six four eight. I will not be on the show tomorrow. It's a travel date for the family, and so we want to be able to, uh, you know, see what's going on here with some of this stuff, and we'll we'll see as things are going along what uh, you know what's really happening to some of these things. So that's primarily what we're looking at so far. We have the euro uh, moving pretty strongly to the upside here. And, uh, you know, not much, uh, not much else is going on. And we've got moves in, you know, gold, of course, uh, still up on the day, but not by very much. That's for sure. But we'll have to, uh, you know, see what's going to happen with it before uh, it gets uh, too far, you know, down the road. We'll have to uh, wait and see what, what goes on with that. The uh, currencies are actually holding up uh, relatively well, but... Um, the fact is the euro is actually doing pretty good. It's having a really nice rally right now, but it's rallying to some pretty strong resistance up here at this 1220 uh, area. We'll see if that's going to have much of a, uh, much of a call uh, you know, on that. We'll, we'll, we'll need to, to see that. Uh, the, the futures are still down a little bit from where we were Friday, but no danger yet. The, the market hasn't opened yet. Whether buyers are going to come in or not, you know, uh, you know, remains to be seen, but uh, that that could certainly happen at any time. But the overall breadth of the market, as uh, John Logan talked about, I mean, it's it's really bad. I I just don't understand why people. I guess people don't follow it because it's been straight up for five years, pretty much, and they don't realize really it means anything. But boy, this this one's really dramatic. It's it's waving red flags, you know, all over the place, and it's something that uh, I think really is a uh, important thing to keep an eye on. That would be my guess, but we'll have to wait and see. Okay. We have um, the uh, next thing I wanted to cover was, oh, I wanted to cover the, uh, the Staples Index. John Murphy uh, was kind enough to send me this chart uh, over the weekend because it was a, a real interesting one to look at. It's, uh, oh, I got two things to cover here. First, I'll do the, uh, the one here with, the, uh, with Staples. Uh, I got both of these from uh, John. And uh, I wanted to uh, send these on to you. I got to have, have him on as a guest too. He'd be a great guest to have on. Uh, this shows how the staples, you know, your uh, consumer uh, consumer staples have fallen out of bed. Uh, you can see the massive divergence there with the uh, uh, thing turning over. There's a perfect example of the market going up, and you can see the, the consumer staples, how they were lagging behind. That's the same type of scenario that you're having with your advanced decline line and your new highs to new lows. That usually doesn't recti rectify itself very well. And this is what's happened here. You know, we've broken down, you know, quite badly here uh, in the consumer staples. Now, uh, one, one other thing that I think is relatively important, and that is if we take a picture, and uh, this is one of the things that, uh, this is a little blurry, but, uh, you know, you, you might not get it all, but if you go in and do the work yourself, you know, defy human nature, go in and look at what's happening around the world. Uh, here's a set of 16 different countries, and as you can see, every single country uh, is in a downtrend. Some of them are, you know, very steeply so. You look at Singapore, which is supposed to be a, you know, a big company, a country. Australia is down. Uh, you know, uh, Canada is, uh, you know, in the toilet. I mean, uh, 
uh, there's just a whole bunch of Germany is the same way. Uh, France is not too bad. Mexico is horrible. Uh, you know, just as uh, Spain looks terrible, Switzerland looks terrible. Uh, even Japan has been in a downtrend uh, since May. Even though they talk about it being up, it's still been going lower since May. So we'll see uh, whether this continues. But this is not a good picture for bullishness in stocks long term. Um, that's my assumption, you know. And I know everybody knows how to spell assumption. That's for sure. Anyway, that's what we're looking at here across the board in, in some of these things. The, um, uh, the Japanese stock market was uh, actually down a bit. But uh, John Logan mentioned about China uh, having these six, uh, five and six percent moves. Uh, believe me, the, the speculation that goes on over there is quite, uh, quite immense, uh, to say the least. And remember, folks, these folks do not know how to sell short. I can tell you that because I've given lectures over there all the time, and that's the most difficult thing that you can get people to understand. Some of these stocks, they're not even able to sell them short. So if uh, they start down and there's no buyers, there are no buyers, and that's what causes some of these you know, tremendous moves that they have. They report volume uh, many times bigger than we're having here in the United States on indices, and I don't believe that figure one bit. Uh, I'm I, frankly I'm sure of that because well I shouldn't say I'm sure of it but I really believe that that's not a correct figure that's uh, you know the bottom line of you know what uh, what I'm looking at um, the interest rate picture has not changed very much you know interest rates are going to be higher it's a question of when the Federal Reserve is going to say this is it and folks I would not be surprised if they did it right in the middle of the market day. Uh, how the market reacts to it, anything could happen, but they could do it in the middle of the market day without any trouble at all. They did this uh, in 95, uh, yeah, 95 or 96. Greenspan came out and dropped interest rates right in the middle of the trading day around 10 o'clock in the morning, uh, Tucson time, which was 1 o'clock uh, um, New York time, and the uh, S&P uh, rallied 50 handles before there was a trade. Uh, that was the type of move that it was. You know, we're trading at, uh, you know, say 2090 right now. The next trade was at 2055, 2155. And uh, it just bankrupted so many traders on the floor of the exchange. But, you know, nobody cares about traders. So that's what happened. And, and so don't be surprised if it happens during the, during, the, uh, during the market hours. I would not be surprised at all. If uh, if that's going to be the case, that's uh, le at least that's what it looks like to me uh, from my perspective of what we're what we're watching. We had one particular currency that we talked about uh, last week uh, on uh, on Friday show uh, for, to be a potential buy. Uh, that was the New Zealand dollar. It was down, you know, forming a uh, really nice bottom down at that 2044 level. Uh, the low was uh, 24, or was uh, was 70, 20. We've had a really nice rally in that so far today. So uh, if you happen to be in that, put your stop under Friday's low, buckle up and see what happens because it could be a, a really good correction here if uh, nothing else uh, uh, happens to it. So we're going to take a break here. Uh, but right before stocks open, 877-927-6648. to follow our passion and everything else will fall into place. I hope that's what each of you are doing each and every day. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of the Money Master Show at TFN.com, and my passion for technical analysis is what led me to the most fundamental discovery and pattern recognition, the Rhodes Momentum Indicator, market scanner and trading strategy, a set of tools that identify the momentum and the power of the trend, the likes of which have never been seen before for every market and every time frame. Yes, folks, the trend is your friend, unless you're on the other side. New to technical analysis? This is the place to start. And experienced traders, take advantage of the trend like never before. Experience the power of the Rhodes Momentum Indicator each day, available to subscribers of my newsletter service, Mastering Probability. I guarantee your satisfaction for the next 30 days unconditionally, so there's no risk to you other than being on the wrong side of the trend. Mastering Probability, available on the homepage of TFNN.com. And folks, live with passion. Trade with confidence and clarity while using the software that thousands of institutional traders rely on to make the best and most accurate decisions. 
choose from a thousand equities, currencies, and futures instruments utilizing the TAS architecture. As seen on Bloomberg terminals worldwide, the TAS Profile Scanner is a benchmark technical filtering system that thousands of traders rely on, and now you can too. For a limited time for TFNN subscribers only, we've reduced the price to just $97. That's over 75% off. John Logan hosted a special subscriber-only webinar in December, and you'll gain access to that archive as well, so you can learn exactly what the TAS Profile Scanner can do for you. Try this product out. No matter what you trade, the TAS Profile Scanner can help you make more informed trading decisions. There's no obligation to pay anything. Don't let this offer pass you by. Get your 30-day free trial to the TAS Profile Scanner today by signing up at TFNN.com. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den, absolutely free, for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming, see high-definition video, giving you crystal clear charts, as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full-fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Andy Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high-definition audio and video. Tiger TV, exclusively at TFNN.com. Larry takes your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Okay, we're back, folks, and we're getting ready to hear open in the market. I posted the chart uh, for the Dow Jones Utilities, and uh, I know most folks don't believe in the Dow theory anymore, but you know that we've had a huge break in the transportations. You know, they've broken under the yearly lows. Uh, we've actually broken way below the March 13th lows, which were the key lows uh, that we've looked at for quite some time. Uh, and that's a sign that, that cycle has topped, in my opinion. But uh, if you'll notice on this uh, utilities chart, uh, we formed a beautiful triangle here, uh, pennant. And the pennant is broken to the downside like it should because the overall trend uh, from the last high is still down. And uh, that assumes that we're going to have higher interest rate coming. I mean, everything you see... Uh, in these markets is telling you that interest rates are going higher. Uh, the only people that are not reading the, the profile is the uh, Federal Reserve. So we'll have to uh, send them a memo because, uh, you know, we got 10-year uh, notes or, you know, had a huge rally. We're up to two and a half in 10-year notes. They're still way, way uh, you know, higher than they are for uh, Spain and Italy and Ireland and a few other countries that are basically third world countries. Well, oh, whoa, 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 Larry, back that one up a bit. They're a little less developed, let's put it that way. They're certainly not third world. I love those countries because I, I travel there. <laughs> but uh, we'll, uh, we'll see what, why this happens. I don't know. But uh, we live in interesting time, folks. I, I, I was thinking over the weekend what we might call quantitative easing, and it might be called before it's over quantitative diseasing. I don't know. But uh, this is not right when you just print money like that to try to pay off bills. We're seeing the trouble that they're having in uh, 
uh, Greece right now, and God only knows what's going to to happen with that. And she's not telling anyone, so we'll have to let uh, Monsieur Draghi uh, tell us what's going to happen before that's uh, you know out of the bag. So the key question is here: the next five or five minutes or so is how much. Uh, you know, buying is going to come in to support the market. Uh, we're making new lows uh, in the German market we're, for the day. Also for the uh, for the UK, we've made new lows. Uh, we're st we're substantially lower in Germany right now. So there's a lot of selling coming in, but that doesn't mean buying can't come in right away and uh, you know turn these markets uh, you know on a dime, which we've seen happen you know more than once. The uh, scenario that I'm looking for is either we're going to bottom, we either bottomed on Friday and we're going to rally into uh, Monday, Tuesday, and possibly Wednesday. That's the 10th that we're looking at, or we're going down hard into the 10th, and then we'll have the rally. And uh, that's what I'm. That's what my scenario is. Of course, uh, with that you get uh, two cents worth of advice, which you don't have to pay for. But that's what I'm looking for. Whether that's going to you know unfold or not, we'll have to wait and see. The first step is is that we take out the lows of Friday. We're not even close to that. You know, we're a good 40 points away in the in the in the Nasdaq from the lows. We're only about uh, about six points away. Uh, in the S and P, you know that can happen right after the open. Um, the Dow Jones is not too far away from those lows, but still quite a bit higher than where they were on Friday. So uh, these lows are holding up, you know, relatively well early in the morning here. But um, the the overall breadth of the market, boy, oh boy, that's a uh, that that's really scary when you see the stocks rolling over like that, and nobody be concerned about it at all. Um, you know, that makes you really wonder what you're doing wrong. I mean, the market's down a little bit, but, you know, not very much. But, you know, pretty soon someone's going to wake up and say, wait, why are my stocks not going up? And they're going to try to sell. And that's the old adage, you know, uh, to who, to who are you going to sell? That's going to be the $64 question. We saw what happened to the bond market, didn't we? You know, bonds at, you know, 160 uh, 161, everybody wanted them. At 157, I mean, they were up three weeks. Everybody wanted them. At 148, nobody wants them. So, uh, you know, these, these are uh, really interesting times that we that we lead in with uh, each day. So, uh, anyway, that's how I see it uh, from the uh, cheap seats. And we'll see if, uh, you know, the rest of the markets are going to do that. And I've got some other charts that I want to cover. I'll probably cover those uh, over the... Uh, Break. I've got one here I want to bring up to show you that we're having a, a pretty substantial move uh, to the downside with gaps now with the um, junk bonds. They, they held up for quite a while, and now they're following treasuries uh, to the downside also. Another indication that we've got, uh, you know, uh, higher interest rates coming. The problem with these junk bond ETFs, folks, is that uh, there's not a lot of liquidity there. So if someone comes in wanting to sell them, uh, believe me, they uh, they they can go down very very fast. As you can see, what happened in the October December period, you know, when they dropped uh, about 10 percent in about five weeks. So uh, this is what can happen here uh, in some of these things. But uh, that's also showing that we are looking. You know, are looking at higher interest rates, that's for sure. On the long term situation, oh, we got to take a break here. 877 927 6648. Quiet Markets investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full customization capability. Nadex's unique short-term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. 
platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you will lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Techno Mental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. If you're like me, you see the world's emerging nations as a very real opportunity as these countries and their economies are developing right before our eyes. And you can rest assured that Everbank has spotted this opportunity too. In fact, they've just released the second running of their five-year Market Safe Futures Economy CD. This is a CD that could really deliver, but you only have until June 11th to take advantage. Consider the facts. If the future economy's currencies beat the US dollar over the CD term, you'll get all of the upside at maturity. And should they lose, no worries. There's zero downside risk here, as you get back 100% of your deposited principal. Don't miss out. The June 11th funding deadline is quickly approaching. So hurry over to everbank.com slash TFNN hyphen CD for more information, including important product details and disclosures. Once again, that's everbank.com slash TFNN hyphen CD. Everbank is an equal housing lender and member FDIC. TFNN has just announced a brand new morning lineup that is geared specifically for traders in this volatile traders market. Every morning at 8 a.m., John Logan starts things off with his daily program, The Global Market Pulse. At 9 a.m., Larry Pesavento trades the market during the market open Monday through Friday on Trade What You See. At 10 a.m., Tom O'Brien hosts the Money Masters for the hour, and Basil Chapman hosts his Tiger Technician's Hour at 11 a.m. From 8 a.m. till noon every market day, these traders are with you as they provide up-to-the-second market information so that you can make the most educated and profitable trades possible. The new TFNN morning lineup is happening right now. Tune in to see for yourself what kind of actionable trading discussion they have each morning, Monday through Friday, starting at 8 a.m., live only on Tiger TV at TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. We had a little bit of a sell-off while we were gone. Uh, early morning selling uh, pushed the futures down a little bit, coming back really strong, not to be unexpected. Always a good buy at the New York Stock Exchange. So we'll have to keep in mind what's going to happen at the end of the day. But we've held the lows so far of, yesterday, of uh, Friday, which I think is very, very important. Uh, we want to take a look here uh, at the gold market. Uh, because I believe I, I posted that before. Uh, so far, we've held the, uh, this is my, my main watch today, is I want to be a buyer of gold uh, because I like this pattern stopping right at the 786 on Friday. We had a pretty good rally that took us up to the highs that we made uh, on Friday, and then we backed off a little bit. So that's not unusual. But if we get back above 1180, I would think that this bottom is in in gold, and we've got a chance to, uh, you know, to, to chance to get in now we've held the silver low uh friday it was fifteen dollars and ninety cents today we got down to fifteen dollars and ninety three cents per ounce so so far that is held uh that is held up you know relatively well uh, also so we want to keep in mind you know what's uh what's going on with that because anytime we close below those numbers uh, we're looking at something you know really serious that we're going to have Norm Winsky from Astro Trend as our guest on the 10th of uh,
you know, technical technical analysis, and uh, I think it would be good to have him on. He's very 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 busy, so it would see that if it's going to be. Uh, then what it's going to have happen, we'll, we'll see what's going on. Okay, that's what we're looking at right now. Not much is uh, going on other than the stock market gyrating around like it usually does. Uh, I did want to bring this uh, chart up that I think is important because if we break this, uh, if we break down today, what's going to happen is you see that we've had a beautiful ABCD pattern form in the cash S&P. It was perfect spot on, that, that low that we made at 209.12. That's why if we do make a lower low below that, it's going to probably break that trend line. Technical gods have shined on us one more time, so we'll uh, we'll be watching uh, closely here um, if this technical stuff will hold up a little bit better. If you have any questions, it's 877-927-6648. And this is Larry Pesaveno for TFNN, and we will see uh, how these markets are going to hold up. I posted the, uh, the chart on the uh, – I wanted to also bring up the one on the uh, TLT, which is the ETF – for the bonds and I wanted to uh, to show you what that chart looks like because we could be at a pretty good bottom here and uh, that was larger bond uh, very very wicked and I would like to show you because this is the kind of thing that you could have in some of these uh, rapidly accelerating markets uh, you can see the ABCD pattern that we have here going back over the last three months. Uh, we made our high back on uh, April Fool's Day. Hmm, that sounds strange. And that was at the 167 level. Uh, we're now 20 points below that, $20,000 in a little over 10 weeks. Wow, not even that long, six weeks. And, uh, you know, it's a pretty big. Well, it is 10 weeks, excuse me. And uh, we are uh, have a target down there at 142. Um, that's what I would uh, be looking at. So uh, this has been a big, big drop. I mean, people are talking about it, but no one's concerned about it. They're willing to buy stocks at any level. So as long as they're willing to do that, there's nothing else you can do but to see what's going to happen. Uh, that's the bottom. take a hands-on approach to managing your investment strategy. You're always looking for the next trading opportunity to magnify your perspective. Direction Shares connects sophisticated traders with a powerful array of ETFs from a wide range of asset classes. The markets may go up and down, and you want tools for both sides of the trade. Discover how we can help at DirectionShares.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction Shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain
contain this and other information about Direction Shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction Shares at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors employing dynamic strategies. Investors in the fund should understand the consequences of seeking daily investment results, understand the risk of shorting, and intend to actively monitor and manage their investments. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. We're told to follow our passion and everything else will fall into place. I hope that's what each of you are doing each and every day. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of the Money Master Show at TFN.com, and my passion for technical analysis is what led me to the most fundamental discovery and pattern recognition, the Rhodes Momentum Indicator, market scanner and trading strategy, a set of tools that identify the momentum and power of the trend, the likes of which have never been seen before, for every market and every time frame. Yes, folks, the trend is your friend, unless you're on the other side. New to technical analysis? This is the place to start. And experienced traders, take advantage of the trend like never before. Experience the power of the Rhodes Momentum Indicator each day, available to subscribers of my newsletter service, Mastering Probability. I guarantee your satisfaction for the next 30 days unconditionally, so there's no risk to you other than being on the wrong side of the trend. Mastering Probability, available on the homepage of TFNN.com. And folks, live with passion. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. Catch the Money Masters as they teach you the art of mastering money when it comes to trading and investing, next on TFNN. Be care of, but uh, you never know these days. We'll uh, hope that the technical gods are still with us. I posted into the Tiger TV the long-term weekly chart of the Treasury notes. Those are the uh, 10, 10, we, uh, 10, <laughs> 10 years or less. And as you can see, uh, it is uh, setting right on a long-term trend, trend line. And if they break much lower, we're looking at something, uh, you know, really, really quite serious uh, on the downside. So uh, the interest rates are going higher. Frankly, I don't know what's wrong with the Fed, why they're doing it. Maybe they're afraid to do it. I don't believe that they are, because why do they care? They're a private bank. It doesn't really uh, make any difference. We never know what they're doing. So, you know, we'll have to uh, wait and see. If that's going to uh, if that's going to be the case uh, or not, um, the German market. I keep an eye on that because it's the the S and P on steroids, and it is uh, breaking down again. It's now more than 100 points below that uh, three drive to a bottom pattern that uh, formed. It rallied 100 and some pips from there, 100 100 points, and then uh, and it's now broken uh, several hundred points below that. So there's a lot of selling coming in across Europe. 
Uh, haven't had any come in across China yet, but there is some from the uh, U.S. a little bit this morning. But uh, if we take out these lows that we made on Friday, I think that's going to be a pretty significant uh, event because the market bottomed at a real key level and stayed there for well over a day and a half, all day Friday and all through uh, Sunday trading and early Monday. And yeah, now it's going to give up. That's equivalent to a day and a half rally, in my opinion. And that means that we'll be heading down. And my assumption is we're probably going to come down into that uh, Mercury uh, direct uh, on the 10th. Uh, as you recall, when we had uh, Norm, I keep talking about Norm Winsky, but he did a great job of pointing that out to us. And uh, I wanted to show you, uh, you know, what uh, this cycle looks like from a uh, astral uh, point of view. If you'll, if you'll take a quick look at this on Tiger TV, you'll notice the last time we had a Mercury retrograde new moon was back in January and the market broke uh, well over 800 points in about nine days. Now, we had the new moon and Mercury uh, retrograde on the uh, 19th of, uh, was that the 18th of May, and that would bring us down, if it's going to drop the same way, it would bring us down to 15,600. So that would be uh, the equivalent type of move, you know, if we get, uh, if we get that type of uh, move coming in uh, at that point, so we want to wait, wait and see if that's going to be uh, if that's going to be the case uh, or not. Um, that's that's my opinion. Looking at what we're what, what we're watching at uh, right now, I believe we're going to come into that. But whether the market's going to uh, do that or not, you know, we'll uh, let the uh, let the trading gods decide. But right now, that's what it looks like uh, from that uh, from that point of view. We made new lows on the day. Uh, during this little break, but whether that means anything or not, it's still it's still relatively uh, relatively important. I want to cover. Someone's asked me to cover uh, uh, a subject that we talked about last week, and that was open interest and what that means when the market is uh, having open interest. The formula for open interest. I'm going to put that into the room because if you have rising uh, open interest and, and rising prices, the market is very strong. But if you have falling prices and falling uh, open interest. The market is also strengthening because you have shorts leaving the market, and uh, that's another you know situation that that can be uh, pretty bullish. The two that are hard to understand when you have mixtures of rising and falling. Uh, right now, in the Treasury bond market, we're having very small. Uh, we're having prices are falling, of course, it's falling pretty fast, but open interest is also falling uh, in the bond. So we're we're due for a rally here. The question is, are we going to come at rally from 142 or from 149? This is the $64 question. We're still quite weak, but we'll have to be uh, to see if that's going to be uh, to do anything uh, at all. So right now we're just having that early morning up and down in the markets that we get, you know, all the time, and we'll see what's going on. Now I have a, a situation in uh, crude oil that looks uh, looks really interesting here. If you'll give me a second, I will be happy to uh, show you uh, what the crude oil uh, looks like on a uh, longer term. Uh, since we made that low back at 42 bucks, we rallied 37 percent, all the way up to 62 dollars, and uh, we made. Uh, it looks to me like we're going to make, be making an ABCD correction here, down to the 54 dollar and 72 cent per barrel level. Let's see if that's going to uh, hold the market. Uh, remember, everybody with the whole world was bearish when it was at 42. All we heard about was 30 dollar oil, 20 dollar oil. We get to 60, we start hearing about 100 dollar oil. So that's uh, normal for these times, but uh, the pattern says that it looks like we have oil heading down towards the uh, 50, uh, rather roughly $55 per barrel level. Let's see if that ABCD at the 382, uh, which makes that a Gartley pattern, by the way, is going to be, uh, you know, very, very important. My assumption is uh, that it is, but uh, we'll let the market tell us if that's going to be the, uh, the case or not. Um, I had one, oh, one other question that someone had, and that was about the uh, biotech index. Uh, it's another one that has held up the market, along with the banking index. Uh, it's held it up really well. As you can see, the biotech index is up uh, around that 367 level. And uh, this market, you talk about a bubble, this thing is a balloon. If you look at this on the weekly basis, uh, I, I couldn't even calculate how many percent it was. From the low of 2009, it was 25, and now it's trading at 367. That's a that's a huge move, uh, an outlier event. You hardly ever see that. So that's certainly uh, in the bubble type category. Uh, remember, 
I think that the two things that are that are really overhanging this market, besides the uh, the fact that we have the you know the internals of the market are absolutely uh, really really bad. We're looking at this situation with margin debt that no one is even talking about, and uh, that's the the main thing that we're that we're following here. That uh, this thing could really cause a lot of problems, folks. That uh, um, that's the way I see it. I'm anxious to listen to Basil on his show when he comes up because uh, he always has great information, especially uh, about the VIX and the internals and stuff. So don't miss his show and also Steve Rhodes and also Tom uh, Tom O'Brien. So we'll watch that uh, you know closely also. Okay, now I want to cover another currency that uh, I believe uh, is important to all of us, and now we've got is the, uh, the euro. Uh, we had this big run-up in the euro. Uh, then we had the sell-off. Uh, we've had some really neat swings in between. Uh, just last night, we came down to the 61% retracement at uh, 110.50. We rallied all the way up to the 61% retracement at 112.20, and now we're trading within that range. So every time this thing moves, they're waiting for Mario Draghi to make some type of a comment whether the market's going to be bullish or bearish, and that's uh, basically uh, what we're looking at. The New York Stock Exchange Index that we've talked about many times uh, has a very, very bearish pattern. Uh, we've uh, mentioned that many, many times, and I'll put this up. There we go. There's the uh, New York Stock Exchange Index, and you can see that uh, after we took out those triple lows that we made between the 28th and the 28th of May and the 1st of June, uh, that told us that we were we were going down. Now we've shattered the the May lows. Now that goes back to the market adage, sell in May and go away. So it didn't make any difference whether you sold on the 6th of May or the 31st of May. Uh, you were uh, still smart to get out during May. And remember, June has the worst month, of, second worst month of any statistical month that we have, you know, and uh, still see what's uh, going on. One of our dinners just says that the interns are still not ugly yet. Well, <laughs> I don't know what ugly is, but uh, like the, like the, the Supreme Court justice, he says, I can't define pornography, but I know it when I see it. So um, the internals to me look look pretty nasty. Uh, that's the way it looks like to me. I uh, it's uh, it's pretty it's pretty interesting to look at. So that's it. Now we have a uh, a really nice uh, pattern here in the XAU uh, because if if gold does happen to hold up here, folks, don't take it off your radar yet because if we can stay above these lows that we made on Friday, we've got a chance in gold. Uh, the, uh, we have a really nice pattern set up where gold has hit the exact 786. The, um, the XAU silver index is actually uh, holding above that number. So that's also a situation where we have a really good spot to uh, possibly go long gold here as long as we don't get below that 1160 level and uh, see, what, uh, <laughs> see what's going to happen. I'm sorry. I have to laugh because sometimes I'm reading the, the comments that people have of the Tiger Dan, and they're really, uh, you know, some of them are really quite funny. So uh, I respect your opinion, however wrong it may be, is one of my favorite quotes from, uh, from Abraham Lincoln. And uh, I might be uh, wrong a lot, but I'm never confused. <laughs> so we'll, we'll have to watch that. We, we really want to keep an eye on this S&P cash, folks, because if we break below this, and I, I can't follow it while I'm on the air here, of course, but, if we below, break below the 209 level in the cash S&P index, that, that's really going to be a nasty, uh, a nasty sign. Uh, that's the way it looks like from uh, you know the technical part part about this, but uh, that's that's what I'm seeing. So whether that's right or not or wrong, we just have to wait and uh, see what's going to uh, happen. Okay, I answered the question about the open interest. I had one other question. Oh, about the transportation. I already covered that one. Oh, I didn't cover the transportation. Let's just bring that one back up in a second. I had a question of how far the, the transportations will rally, and we're going to know the answer to that here very, very shortly because uh, we bounced off the 61% retracement in the um, – Transportations, and then the market, uh, you know, it's had a really nice rally. It's rallied for almost eight days and has gone nowhere. I mean, it's been one of the weaker rallies. We went from 83 to 85, 200 points in the transportations, which is uh, uh, very, very small. And so we have to really watch uh, uh, how much this is going to rally anymore because we get below 8,300. Boy, these things are going to look like, the, the, you know, like a train ran over it. So 
we want to watch that very, very closely uh, also. So uh, that's another one. We, we've had a breakdown in, in the utilities already, and uh, the others are starting to, uh, you know, to move around uh, quite a bit. I've covered the junk bonds, gold, uh, the New York Stock Exchange Index, the highs and lows, the margin debt. Now i got everything pretty much covered. Um, see, what other questions we have towards the end here? Um, oh, my, my strategy in the gold is that um, if we don't reach, I'm trying to buy gold at the uh, 1167 level. That's the 61% uh, retracement. Let me put that in here to let you see what that looks like because this has been, uh, that's not what I wanted to see. Hold on a second. I've got it here somewhere. I know I do. Oh, I'm done with the show. That's it, boys and girls. Oh, there we go. If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock in option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com.